Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. Black heart, black mind, black and again. Hit the share button because the message is more important than the messenger. Um, I'm recording this right now at a time in which I soon have to go back to teaching because I'm trying to work on my brevity since you Negroes have short attention spans. I've spoken before about the need for us to uh, police the Johnson and also the need for us to oppose Johnson policing. And it may seem like these are two mutually exclusive messages. I will now explain why they're not and uh, the choice that we're going to have to make. The first thing to understand is that the type that we must always oppose is where the matriarchy, the gynocracy, Bumashika and Bonquisha and Sapphire, and then even Bertha start telling us what to do and what not to do. And I say that because they're largely um, trying to emasculate the bulk of us. That's really all that is. Most of us are not the ones they want to screw. It's fine, but they want to emasculate those of us that they don't want to screw so that we feel we will have no um, sexual options that do not come along with raising some other men's kids. They're simply trying to reinforce and paint us into the corner of uh, the alpha breeds and the beta feeds. You understand? The alpha plays and the beta pays. Because, see, the only alpha and beta are really just what they choose. It's not really about us. It's about them. These terms and any validity they could possibly have strictly rely on them. Next. Now that we got that out the way, we want to oppose their policing. We men are going to have to determine which one of two types of policing we will engage internally. Where I live, my skill is valuable. Most of you listening cannot come over here and teach English. You can speak it, but you cannot teach it. You cannot explain it. You certainly could not make it an easier language for them to learn because that's not your training. A lot of you have different skill sets. I'm not knocking those. This is just not one of them. This is my skill set. I work, live here with the others who share the same skill set. And I specialize in making it easy for them to learn despite being Arabic speakers, a language which is completely unrelated to ours. So we're sitting on valuable skills here for this region. If somebody wants to employ us privately, we're taking a risk because the employment contracts under which we're in the country prohibit private teaching. So this is a risk. Plus, we're sitting on a valuable skill. They're asking us to risk our jobs and employ a valuable skill for their own benefit. That drives the price up. 40 US an hour is the standard. 35 is the discount rate, if you can think of a reason to offer a discount. End of story. And when you were in places um, outside of these larger cities that everyone wants to live in, you go up because the better one is even harder to teach than somebody who's urban. The better one is the most difficult one to teach. They repeat the same mistakes over and over again. I had to kick two of my students out yesterday because they started having a conversation on the microphone in Arabic. In English class, which is not allowed. Had to kick them out. You niggas are absent. And if you argue with me about it, you're absent another hour. Say something else. I had to do this because the better one is we should charge 50 U.S. an hour to teach them. If a teacher decides to undercut the rest of us, we move from the soft policing to the hard policing. Good cop, bad cop. We have already incentivized um, every teacher to not go below because they don't have to. They can get more money for the same work. They might as well because the work's not that easy. Unless you've just done it for so long it's a routine, it's not that easy. Understand? Now, if a teacher decides they're going to come over here and they're going to undercut the rest of us because of their little financial situation or maybe got a drug habit or something like that, we don't fib a guck. It's better for them to come to us and have a, ask us to help them out than it is for them to go and undercut what we're doing. We run a racket. We make no apologies for it. I don't engage in private teaching. But if another teacher does and I find out they're doing this for below the discount rate, we will gather evidence, bring it to the employer, snitch on them and get them to lose their job and then be deported. We move to the hard policing because we might have to, not because we hate anyone. We're not going to screw it up for the rest of us. Absolutely not. Teaching, see, speaking English is something you can pick up from childhood easily, but teaching it is a skill you must study and learn and develop. That's the end of that. You understand, gentlemen? Well, 
You can police it softly or you can police it difficultly, whichever one. I recommend that we start with the first form. We simply are on code. We um, keep the price above a particular floor so that every man coming up in the next generation is incentivized to simply keep things the way that they are. Simply put, doing what the women have already done. I do not advocate that we start doing the other thing that the women are doing, which is ask each other about their intimate lives so that they can police them and shame each other. Because, see, they're only using that to shame them for making smart choices in the first place. Keep that in mind. Their only uh, employment of the shaming tactics are so that they can really justify. Sorry, they only employ this so that they can justify uh, themselves individually making the worst choices and not making any uh, smarter choices because that would be convenient for most of us because most of us are not the knucklehead niggas um, that wind up in trouble and that provide the excitement to them, make them feel all tingly. They know they're choosing wrong. They shame each other so that they can continue to choose wrong. And they shame those who won't. I kid you not. So they're already employing it for the wrong means. One level, the good cop, and then the level, next level, the bad cop, literally the bad cop. We have to choose men. Are we going to employ the first one and leave it at that? Or are we going to have to retroactively go back and start with the bad stuff? Wherein maybe you don't ask everybody about the business, but when somebody starts bragging about how much they're getting and how little they got to do to get it, you just go upside the head and whoop their behind because not because you hate them, not because you're mad that they're getting what you ain't, but it's because they are actually messing things up. They are they think that they're bragging and thumping their chest. No, what they're doing is they're reinforcing the cheap low price of their junk. And the high value of hers. That's what they're doing. The, the, the value imbalance they're reinforcing. And we don't have time for that. Because this is no longer just about us. As I've said before, even us doing what I said is not something that's going to change the way that the modern day boom shikas, bonquishas, and sapphires behave. But it is something that will, in fact, incentivize good behavior in the ones that are going to come up next haven't been born yet, or they're still little kids now at the time of this recording, they will be incentivized to behave with more respect and appreciation towards men. And the young men will be incentivized to behave with more respect and appreciation for themselves. And then therefore they can afford to respect and appreciate the women more. Because let's be honest, a lot of these young men are still stuck. And even a lot of us adults are not going to be leaving the West anytime soon, even if we want to. So this in between in the meantime solution is actually valuable. Now, the long term solution is still, as I've said, work on your skill set, save what you can, research the nations, pick one and go there. Just to be able to live your life, even if you want to be single, let alone to live it in a way where you've starting you start a family and build a legacy. That's the long term solution. But what I just said is both long and short term. And think about this. Would it hurt other men in other societies to learn to make the women value their junk even more? I can tell you now it will not hurt because where I live right now, as I've said before, if a woman wants to be a thought, she could, but she's going to have to face some rejection because every man ain't going to just drop them draws first time she makes an advance. It's not the way that's going to work. They don't want to risk rejection and they could go to jail for harassment just the same as a man can. So you don't have a situation where you got a bunch of uh, overly valued women and a bunch of uh, desperate, thirsty dudes. It's, it's not really what you got. When they're young, the fathers are the ones that actually um, make the dowries and therefore make the marriages unaffordable. It's not the ladies themselves. They know they ain't going to get none no other way. And they don't want to be celibate. So no, they're not the ones doing this. They're not shutting the men out per se. I hope this helps. Thank you for listening. Black heart, black mind, black out. Aslam alaikum. And black heterosexual non select male power, which is only possible if we start policing our own stuff. And black patriarchy until extinction or judgment day. <laughs>